everyone, it's Miss Lady Petal here again. And look, I'm doing today, I'm doing, um, I'm actually doing a couple of pages today. Um, and I wanted to do a face, I pulled out my watercolour pencils because I thought, oh yeah, they probably make these lines a little bit easier to paint and um, blending in. But what I really kind of found um, was my watercolour pencils are really quite old and um, they've become really brittle and right now I cannot actually put them in a pencil sharpener at all so I actually had to sit down so they look a little bit odd I actually had to sit down and use a craft knife and sharpen them that way so I just thought to myself, hmm, okay, well, that starts that. <laughs> and I'm just going from a little bit of a reference photo that I was following on Pinterest. Um, and I wanted to capsulate here someone who was um, kind of lost in God. So a woman who was lost in worship or contemplation or prayer and that was kind of my thoughts on doing this and I must admit she looks pretty ugly until right at the end. <laughs> I just It was one of those ones where I thought, oh yes, I'm taping this and don't you always find that um, it looks worse it, it just it, it flows harder for me sometimes I think um, when that happens for me <laughs> so um, what you're seeing is me using a lot of watercolor pencils and just a few normal color pencils the lips and things like that um, and I will go over this first with a little bit of a water pen but then also I will do a lot of um, acrylics over the top as well and it just looks really odd at this point it faces always have their ugly stage and you know at this point I bet you're sitting there thinking oh my gosh that just looks like some really really bad coloring in <laughs> so I just I just have to say to you keep watching and have a bit of faith because she kind of works out I mean she's not perfect but then none of my girls are perfect and I'm not always looking to go completely realistic um, and the reference photo that I was using actually her eye was a bit smaller and I made mine just that little bit bigger because it just looked at that little bit odd so I think sometimes we just have to go with the flow and um, I tell you what this is a great rubber it's a, um, a chalk rubber so you can use this with pastels and I was able to rub out a lot of that watercolor pencil um, and so here I am water activating it and look how yellow it goes and I was a bit stunned by that because that is not really what was showing up on the pencil and it just made me wonder whether these old tints had discolored in some way um, and so at this point just wanting to do a quick watercolor face I gave up because I knew that that wasn't going to happen when I've got lots of yellow working into the face here like this and it not working in very well on this mixed media paper so yeah it was kind of not working out for me really as much as what I liked and it looked you know have a look at that really too patchy and so I just start thinking to myself okay well I'm gonna have to pull out some of my flesh tone paints and I usually use the ceram coat paints which is what I'm using here and you can see it's a much more peachy color but it should and it does preserve the under coloring so you always have your color blocking technique and so my watercolor pencils were determined to be a watercolor technique here and 
essentially you start evening out the skin tone and I must admit it looked better here on video than what it really looked on paper at the time while I was doing it <laughs> so so you'll see me just keep adding stuff and adding stuff in and just you know I think this whole process is finding that which works for you and what how you want to do stuff but my white here was not looking particularly white and of course all the underpainting was causing that but it looked a lot whiter to me when I was doing it and so now I'm just going in with more blending and you just have to this is kind of like an intuitive process and I think the further the more you do faces the more that you sit there and you think okay how is that face turning out for me and what more do I have to do for this and um, you know and in this part here I've made the center of her mouth just a little bit darker and then forgotten that that bottom lip was um, more. I was using a little bit of Gamsol or um, solvent there to just even the pencil out on the lips and make them look that little bit wetter. So now I'm getting some darker beige and I'm going to put uh, just scrubbiness in. And I'm using a Dina Wakely brush but this Dina Wakely brush is incredibly well used. And I'm putting some darkness in and so when you put darkness in you normally do this at the beginning but when I did it with the watercolor pencils it didn't go quite like what I thought so because I chose to put this darkness in here what it means is that I then have to go over that and blend that darkness in because at the moment she's looking very garish and so I get my Santa's flesh and my deco art and I start blending away and all of this just essentially what it does is it just um, gives your skin tone depth and translucence you know like it really has depth and character and you have to seriously think to yourself at this point alright so you know what am I going to do here how do I want this girl to look and I kind of thought to myself, okay, was that really the right colour that I wanted to use? And I'm just deciding, you know, do I lighten the whole lot out? Do I scrub it in? Do I keep a lot of those shadows? How do I want that face to look? And I'm trying some pencils. Now those were oil-based pencils and then I was trying water-based pencils and you just got to have a look and see what works over your paint. Now the Ceramco paints are, are quite toothy paints so my normal kind of pencils actually work quite well but the whites weren't taking which meant that I either had to use a China Graph pencil or I had to use something like an oil pastel which goes over anything and or a white sharpie or something like that to add in the whites where I needed to be for the lip and I just found here that some of the lighter pencils just didn't work as well and so I was just adding some texture in here to give those lips a little bit of depth and they're looking much better now I'm much happier with them than I was before but even so you know uh, it's just really I'm using some um, Stabilo Brown here and black just to strengthen those and now I've got a great big Lyra pencil now that's a really good kind of wax based pencil they're not as good as the Prismas I have a lot of these when from when I first started doing faces a lot of flesh tone pencils but I find because this is such a big pencil it works very well just evens out a lot of things and I kind of thought to myself okay done enough at this point and then I go back in again with a warmer tone and just really start um, I think it's one of those things in these processes that you just keep going until you tweak it to your liking. 
I hadn't thought about the background at this point and of course she's got no hair there and I'm you know I do a lot of pages where I have the hair sweeping back across the page and then I write my notes in the hair but this time around I did something really really different and I was sitting there thinking okay I'm closing in for God what am I thinking right now and I just pulled out these tree stencils and I sometimes think that when you get into the space of doing this kind of thing that you get a little bit intuitive about how it's all going so and and what you're doing all together so I am going to be spraying with a slate sort of delusions spray and I know that it dries a, an awful lot lighter and I wanted to reverse it here on the on the wider part so I just sort of had that kind of you know blotchiness and I like to get those delusions paints as much of them off the stencils because the next time you use it they'll come off and reactivate so I've got this grey slate kind of thing happening and I wanted to add in some white now unbeknownst to me until I started playing with this I had some magenta left residual in that paintbrush which I kind of liked because when I went in and did some of the trees with it and um, I found that the paper was particularly absorbent here and I found when I was using and I was just using poster paint and I wasn't using an artist paint here and the poster paint just soaked in to to the picture like to the paper so quickly that you'll see me constantly reloading my brush and I'm actually putting a fair amount of paint on each on those brushes and I'm surprised at how quickly they actually it actually runs out and um, I thought to myself here I wanted to make it look really misty and kind of like the trees were rising out of the mist and um, over here I was doing that same kind of that pink background sort of came out in the same but I wanted it with the white and I wanted it to kind of mist around and that that poster paint just to really coat the page and because it's a poster paint it was really quite translucent for a, it wasn't a block out kind of a white so it, came, it went on almost you know like a glaze and just gave me that different kind of it kind of came out looking messy and and sometimes I think our thoughts are like that and even you know if we get pictures and things sometimes they're really jumbled and sometimes we don't know why the colors are the way they are and uh, what the pictures mean but this is kind of what just came out for me when I was doing this page and getting it prepared for the notes and it re really was more of a journey this particular page 